All right, today we're going over Egyptian gods, each and every one of them. This is about understanding what role they played, what stories they were part of, that kind of stuff. Basically, we're looking at what these deities meant to ancient Egyptians. It's not the most thrilling topic for everyone, but if you're into history and mythology, you might find it interesting. So let's get into it. All right, let's start with Ra. He's like the sun god, the big cheese among all the gods, uh, according to the ancient Egyptians. They believed he brought about creation, and when the sun rose, they saw it as Ra being reborn each day. Pretty wild, huh? Moving on to Osiris, the guy in charge of the underworld and resurrection. He's all about the life and death cycle, and he even gets to judge souls in the afterlife. Talk about a heavy responsibility. Now we come to Isis, Osiris' wife. She's got some serious magical skills and she's seen as a protector and mother figure. Pharaohs and nature, they're her top priorities. Not a bad gig if you ask me. Ah, uh, Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris. Uh, he's considered a sky god and the ruler of the earth. And get this, he's got this famous eye that's all about protection. I wouldn't mind having an eye like that, you know, just for kicks. Let's talk about Amun now. He's another one of those king of the gods types, but he's got a special connection with the wind. They even combined him with Ra at one point, calling him Amun-Ra. Sounds like a power move to me. Anubis, the god with the jackal head. He's all about the underworld, but his focus is on mummification and guiding souls. Definitely not your everyday job description, that's for sure. Hathor, the goddess of love, beauty, music, and motherhood. Now that's quite a combination, right? She's all about good vibes and spreading positive energy. I could use some of that in my life. Next up is Thoth, the god of writing, magic, and wisdom. He's like the ancient Egyptian version of a walking encyclopedia. If you needed some magical advice or had a burning question, Thoth was your go-to guy. All right, let's talk about Ptah. He's another one of those creator gods, but he's got a unique twist. He's not just about creating stuff. He's also the patron of craftsmen and architects. I bet the builders of ancient Egypt said a little prayer to Ptah before starting their projects. Geb, the god of the earth, simple and straightforward, just like his domain. He's the one responsible for keeping the ground beneath our feet, so I think we should all be grateful to him. Shu, the god of air, light, and wind. He's Nut and Geb's son, so he's got some pretty important parents. I guess you could say he's responsible for keeping the air breezy and the light shiny. Tefnut, Shu's sister and the goddess of moisture. Rain, dew, all that wet stuff, it's her domain. You definitely want to be on her good side if you ever needed a refreshing shower on a hot day. Set, the god of chaos, storms, and the desert. He's got a bit of a bad reputation, but he did have a role to play in protecting Ra during his journey through the underworld. So he's not all bad, I guess. Mat, the goddess of truth, balance, and order. She's like the cosmic referee, making sure everything is fair and square in the world. The ancient Egyptians believed that when pharaohs ruled with Mat, the land thrived. Now we have Sobek, the crocodile god. Yeah, you heard that right. Egyptians saw him as a protector and a creator god, representing the power of the pharaoh. Just imagine having a crocodile as your divine symbol. Bastet, the cat goddess. She's not just any cat, mind you. She's a fierce protector against evil spirits and diseases. The ancient Egyptians had a deep appreciation for cats, and Bastet was their feline queen. Anhur, the god of war. If things got heated, Anhur was the one to call upon for some battle prowess. He was the guy you'd want on your side in a fight, fierce and ready to defend. 
Kanum, the creator god with a unique talent, shaping humans on a potter's wheel. It's like he had his own little workshop, carefully crafting each individual. Who knew gods could be such skilled artisans? Wajit, yet another protector goddess. Seems like the ancient Egyptians needed all the protection they could get. Wajit specifically watched over Lower Egypt and had a fierce cobra as her emblem. Talk about a hysterious choice. Kepri, the scarab beetle god. Now scarab beetles might not seem impressive, but they represented the rising sun to the ancient Egyptians. Kepri was all about that symbol of new beginnings and the eternal cycle of life. Nefertum, the god of perfume and healing, he had quite the nose for nice scents and was associated with rejuvenation and restoration. If you needed a good smelling potion or a touch of healing magic, Nefertum was your guy. Montu, the war god with a falcon head, he was all about bravery, strength, and victory in battle. The ancient Egyptians looked to him for protection and guidance when it came to military matters. Khonsu, the moon god, Egyptians associated him with the moon cycles and believed he had the power to heal and grant fertility. With the moon as his domain, Khonsu definitely had an ethereal aura. Hapi, the god of the Nile, ancient Egyptians depended on the Nile River for their livelihood, and Hapi was the one responsible for its annual flooding and fertility. He made sure the river flowed just right. Atum, another creator god, but with a twist. He's all about self-creation, like a divine solo act. In the beginning, Atum created himself, and from there, the world took shape. That's what I call self-sufficient. Anuket, the goddess of the Nile once again. She specifically watched over the river's upper part, protecting it and ensuring its bounty. The Nile had quite the divine fan club, it seems. Renenutet, the goddess of nourishment and the harvest. When it came to crops and sustenance, the ancient Egyptians knew Renenutet had their backs. She made sure their fields were abundant and bellies well fed. Heket, the frog goddess linked with birth. Egyptians believed that Heket aided in the birthing process and ensured safe deliveries. Frogs might not be glamorous, but they sure had their place in Egyptian mythology. Aker, the god of the earth and the horizon, depicted as a double lion deity, he guarded the eastern and western horizons, symbolizing the sunrise and sunset. Aker was believed to provide protection and stability to the world. Bennu, a heron-like bird associated with rebirth and renewal. Egyptians believed that Bennu represented the soul of the sun god, Ra, and its cry marked the beginning of a new era, a bird of great significance heralding fresh beginnings. Mahis, the lion-headed god associated with weather and war, known for his fierce and protective nature, Mahes was invoked for strength and victory in battles. He was like the ancient Egyptian embodiment of courage. Neper, the god of grain and agriculture, Egyptians relied heavily on agriculture, and Neper ensured the bountiful growth of crops, ensuring sustenance for the people. He was like the divine farmer, making sure everyone had enough to eat. Nemti, the god of travel. Egyptians sought the protection and guidance of Nemti during their journeys, ensuring safe passage and favorable outcomes. He was like their divine travel agent, making sure everything went smoothly. Hesat, a cow goddess symbolizing motherhood and nourishment. Egyptians associated her with fertility and believed that she provided milk and sustenance to the gods and humans alike. Hesat was the nurturing maternal figure of the pantheon. Kek, the god of darkness, associated with the primordial chaos before creation. Kek represented the obscurity and mystery of the night. He was like the ancient Egyptian embodiment of darkness and the unknown. Aten, a sun disk deity, worshipped during the reign of Pharaoh Akhenaten. 
Aten was believed to be the source of all life, radiating light and warmth to sustain the world. Pharaoh Akhenaten elevated Aten to a supreme position during his monotheistic reforms. Sapdu, the god of the sky and the eastern border, often depicted with a falcon head, Sapdu guarded the eastern frontier, protecting Egypt from potential threats. He was like the divine sentry, keeping an eye out for any trouble. Hatmehit, a fish goddess associated with fertility and the Nile. Egyptians revered her as a provider of nourishment and believed that she brought abundance to the river and its surrounding lands. Hatmehit was the aquatic deity ensuring prosperity. Amhe, a minor underworld god associated with the punishment of evildoers. Egyptians believed that Amhe devoured the hearts of those deemed wicked, ensuring they received their deserved fate in the afterlife. He was like the divine enforcer of justice. Shed, a savior god associated with protection and rescue. Egyptians called upon Shed during times of danger or distress, seeking his assistance and guidance. He was like their divine lifeguard, ready to lend a helping hand. Last but not least, Shezmu, the god of wine and perfume, but also had a role in execution. Egyptians associated him with both the pleasures of intoxication and the act of dispensing justice through punishment. A peculiar combination, but that's an Egyptian god for you. So, that concludes our discussion on the Egyptian gods. It's probably the last one in this series. Don't worry though, there are going to be more videos coming up, ones that might spark your interest even more. Well, see you next time, and don't forget to subscribe, okay?